Listen to me. Television is not the truth. Television is a goddamn amusement park. Television is a circus, a carnival, a traveling troupe of acrobats, storytellers, dancers, singers, jugglers, sideshow freaks, lion tamers, and football players. We're in the boredom killing business. You know, first of all, first of all, let me say this. Let me say this. We, we, we you know, some of these folks, I understand the money involved, but they need to grow the hell up. Sports is theater. Hello, I'm author Brian Tui. Since 2010, I've written four books about sports and corruption. The Fix is In, Larceny Games, A Season in the Abyss, and The Fix is Still In. I've also written for the likes of Sports Illustrated, Sports on Earth, and Vice Sports. And somehow I can be called a scholarly authority as I've been cited before the United States Supreme Court. But mainly what I do is talk about game fixing in sports. I approach this from two different angles. The first is from the sports gambling aspect of things. The college kids are fixing games right now. Again, you don't want to put a blanket over everybody, but is it going on now? Absolutely. What about pro players? They don't need the money as badly. Not anymore. Back in my day, yes. We put a lot of guys in trouble because if they lost 50, 100, I used to tell a guy when I had a bookmaker coming to me and we had the Jets, Yang, and they were, they were gambling. And they said, Mike, the guy's into me for 50,000. Should I cut him off? I said, why would you cut him off? You're writing an entry on a piece of paper. Let him get into you for 250000 because he will. Usually athletes don't get, they don't, they're not smart gamblers. I just let him get into you deep and then bring him to me. Because I tell him straight out, look, you owe a gambling debt, whether it be here or in Vegas, you're going to pay. You can't walk away from your debt. So let's figure it out. How are you going to do it? So if you don't bring me the money by Monday, I'll give you another way out. You guys are favored to win by 14, by 10, by 7. You're a quarterback, first time you get the ball, you put it in the other receiver's hands. You're a running back, first time you get the ball, you put it on the ground. Drop it. You know, let me worry about the rest. In short, you might have been a Yankee fan, and I'm not saying it was the Yankees. You really didn't give a damn about these guys. No. You know, when it comes to that, it was business. Despite the denials of the NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball, and others, who in the past actually hired Mr. Francesi to talk to their athletes about the dangers of sports, gambling, and game fixing, most everyone can agree that this has happened in the past and will likely occur again in the future. I mean, if it's been proven, and it has been, that the world's most popular sport has seen matches fixed in the world's most watched sporting event, then why is everyone in denial about the possibility of a regular season NBA game being fixed? Especially when one of the league's team owners said this on a national radio show. You know, the Mavs, once we were eliminated from the, the playoffs, we did everything possible to lose games. Can you say that again, Mr. Billionaire Mark Cuban? You know, the Mavs, once we were eliminated from the, the playoffs, we did everything possible to lose games. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how an NBA owner fixes a game. Not with a gun, but with a steak dinner. So, in line with such a public pronouncement, what I'm here to discuss is the other type of fixing which occurs in sports today. That is when the leagues themselves manipulate or outright fix their own games for entertainment purposes. Of course, this is considered a conspiracy theory, and I've been dubbed the king of sports conspiracies. But I think if you'll bear with me and watch this video, the evidence I'll present will prove to you that this is the case. Now I know you don't have a lot of time, and there's a whole bunch of cat videos out there to watch. So go ahead and rev up this presentation to one and a half times normal speed, and I'll try to make these five points as concisely as possible. Here we go. Fact number one. Revenue sharing. All leagues share revenue. As much as the owners like to portray that it's our team versus the entire league, on the money side of things, it's all for one and one for all. The NHL does this, the NBA does this, and heck, even Major League Baseball owners share revenue. It's what keeps many small market teams in business. How each league accomplishes this is a complex mess of dollars and equations, but trust me, they all do it. More than any other league, though, NFL owners share somewhere between 70 and 80% of all revenue the league takes in. The vast majority of this money comes directly from each league's broadcast rights. In other words, TV money, which is why wins and losses are virtually meaningless to each team's bottom line. What matters is star athletes and storylines. They garner the highest ratings, generate more ad revenue, and land the best TV deals, which in turn means there's more money for everyone involved. So, no matter which team is on the receiving end of a championship ring, every team will profit when a dream season is maximized. Fact 2. While we casually call them sports, the NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball, NHL, NASCAR, and the rest are all in fact businesses. They don't play the games for free. They play them to make money, and this has been going on since about 1869. 
The NFL actually argued this very fact before the Supreme Court, with their lawyers stating that the NFL's teams compete as a unit in the entertainment marketplace. The WWE, professional wrestling, which is admittedly scripted sports entertainment, exists in this exact same marketplace as the NFL, NBA, and the rest. They are all just a form of show business, and the athletes are the entertainers. Let me run a scenario past you. A wealthy owner hires a general manager who in turn appoints a staff to oversee an operation which includes trainers, equipment managers, and coaches. Then, the general manager seeks out the best employees available, each of whom is a specialized talent capable of doing what few others in the world can do. Once this roster is assembled, the coaches work with them, teach them, train them, and push them to be the very best they can possibly be. The work is choreographed and practiced time and again until it becomes routine, muscle memory even, and can be executed with split-second timing and precision. Then, when the time comes, this troupe is brought out to perform in front of a paying audience who marvel at the athleticism on display. Now what did I just describe? A circus? A ballet troupe? Or an NFL team? Truth be told, there is little difference between the inner workings of each operation. What's different is the perception of the audience. A circus is a performance. Ballet is art. Football is a sport. But in reality, in each case what is on display is merely entertainment. Don't believe me? Listen to this. Um, uh, well, we, we sell fantasy. You know, we don't sell reality. And, and we have grown men and women, you know, in costumes, playing for millions of dollars, and more importantly, enthralling tens of millions of people. Um, and, and, and furthermore, we sell competition. You know, our teams and our athletes have to be bitter, bitter rivals and competitors on the field of play, but they've got to be partners off the field of play. And we need rules. We sell uncertainty of outcome. And so we need rules, both playing rules, and frankly, we need economic rules. But isn't, the reality, the, isn't the reality that it's a business when owners want it to be a business. It's a sport when they want it to be a sport. And for a fan, it's, uh, I agree with you, it's a, a fantasy. Fact three. The ticket you purchase to a sporting event is actually just a license to see the listed event. In other words, if you buy a ticket to a Major League Baseball game, the league and the team's only obligation is to play a baseball game. It doesn't mean the league's rules have to be followed or that certain athletes need to appear or perform or that the game played even needs to be legitimate. They just need to show up and put on an exhibition of baseball rather than, say, a volleyball game, and Major League Baseball has fulfilled its duty to the ticket purchaser. Don't believe me? This has been proven in court with a Spygate lawsuit. In that case, a New York Jets fan sued the New England Patriots for illegally, by the NFL's rules, videotaping their opponent's coaching signals. The lawsuit asked for the Jets ticket holders' money back from the past 10 years worth of games, the duration of the Patriots' cheating via this videotaping scheme. The Third Circuit Court of Appeals' main conclusion in this case was the following. At best, he, the plaintiff, possessed nothing more than a contractual right to a seat from which to watch an NFL game between the Jets and the Patriots, and this right was clearly honored. The plaintiff possessed either a license or, at best, a contractual right to enter Giants Stadium and to have a seat from which to watch a professional football game. In the clear language of the ticket stub, this ticket only grants entry into the stadium and a spectator's seat for the specified NFL game. The plaintiff actually was allowed to enter the stadium and witness the specified NFL game between the Jets and the Patriots. He thereby suffered no cognizable injury to a legally protected right or interest. The judge went on to conclude, We do not condone the conduct on the part of the Patriots and the team's head coach, and we likewise refrain from assessing whether the NFL sanctions and its alleged destruction of the videotapes themselves were otherwise appropriate. We further recognize that professional football, like other professional sports, is a multi-billion dollar business. In turn, ticket holders and other fans may have legitimate issues with the manner in which they are treated. Significantly, our ruling also does not leave the plaintiff and other ticket holders without any recourse. Instead, fans could speak out against the Patriots, their coach, and the NFL itself. In fact, they could even go so far as to refuse to purchase tickets or NFL-related merchandise. However, the one thing they cannot do is bring a legal action in a court of law. And if that's the best protection a ticket provides a fan, which is basically zero protection at all, do you honestly believe watching a game on television grants one more legal rights to a fair game? So did you hear that, sports fans? Stop trying to sue a team or a league when there's a bad call that goes against you. You cannot win. Not in a court of law.
Fact 4. There is no federal law preventing a league from fixing its own game. Let me state that again in case you do have this cranked up to two times the normal playback speed. There is no federal law preventing a league from fixing its own game. There are two federal laws that do come close. The first is known as the quiz show law because, believe it or not, the television networks in the 1950s used to fix their game shows in exactly the manner I allege sports are rigged today and for the very same purposes, to make them more exciting and to keep people watching. In a nutshell, the quiz show law states that it is illegal to alter or rig the outcome of an intellectual contest for broadcast purposes. The key word in the law is intellectual, as this law does not apply to physical or other types of contests. In other words, you couldn't legally fix the outcome of Jeopardy, but you could tamper with Survivor, The Bachelor, or the NFL because none of these contests are intellectual in nature. The other law of note on the books is the Sports Bribery Act of 1964, which was passed to protect the integrity of sports from the Mafia and other gambling interests. It reads in its entirety, Whoever carries into effect, attempts to carry into effect, or conspires with any other person to carry into effect any scheme in commerce to influence in any way by bribery any sporting contest, with knowledge that the purpose of such scheme is to influence by bribery that contest, shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than five years or both. The key word here being bribery. If a league instructs one of its employees, be it an official, a coach, or an athlete, to influence and or manipulate an outcome in a certain manner, such action does not break this law. Bribery has not occurred. It's a terrific start that led to a 14-point lead at one point, but it's down to five. What changed those last few minutes for you guys? You want me to be honest with you? Yes. The guys with the whistles. Believe it or not, no one has ever been arrested for violating the Sports Bribery Act in relation to an NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball, or NHL game. And that includes former NBA ref Tim Donahue. Fact 5. This is the saddest point of all and one that everyone should now be aware of. It is legal for the media to lie to you. In the era of President Trump, it's become clear that fake news is everywhere. This holds true for sports coverage as well. In fact, what's worse for sports fans is that the major networks, which are owned by gigantic media conglomerates, literally fund professional sports. The NFL, NBA, and the rest could not exist as they do without television's money. In fact, every player's salary is paid for by the television networks. The reason the cap space rises each year is because television is pumping more and more money into sports leagues because it's become the last thing broadcast on television that needs to be consumed live as it happens. Without TV's money, sports as we know it ceases to exist. So ESPN, NBC Sports, TNT Sports, and all the rest won't negatively cover sports or do deep investigations into corruption in sports because they fund sports. It's their biggest form of entertainment. It's their most watched programs. It's all just show business. These five facts are undeniable. And being true, with nothing preventing the league from manipulating or fixing one of its own games, wouldn't it be the best business decision to do so? To give the fans exactly the type of drama they crave? The clear answer is yes. So you can debate which players, referees, teams, and games have been influenced, but it doesn't really matter. Because if just one game, just one, was intentionally manipulated by a league, then every game that league presents becomes suspect. The league's integrity vanishes. And without that, what's left? What is there to sell you besides their integrity? Remember what's going on. More and more throughout this country, gambling is being legalized. Yes. So you have a lot of people betting a lot of money on these games, and they see these referees, they, they all have, just like I have right now, they have an earpiece in. Right. So they're starting to say, again, conspiracy theories are flying. Right. This cloud of doubt is growing over the NFL. Are these games predetermined? Are they, right. did they, did well, they want the Rams if, to go? If, if, if the people ever think the outcome is already predetermined, it's over. Football is done. And, and again, what did the, the owner of the New Orleans Saints say? Right. Um, Gail, Gail Benson. Uh, Benson. Mm -hmm. what, what did she write in her response? She used the word integrity. Mm -hmm. She said this is it called into question the integrity of the National Football League. Well, that's that's a strong word to use because after a while, it, once you lose your integrity, Skip, you're I, done. I, I, I think this